Hello and welcome. I'm Premnath from Danfoss Climate Solutions and in this video we're going to take a closer look at how to exchange a controller. More precisely we are going to look into um, exchanging an AKCC550A to the new AKCC55 controller. We're going to show how to do that on our new system manager 800A but the steps are more like uh, the same on an on our old AK system manager 800 unit the interface is different but steps are pretty much the same so let's dig into it first of all we need to log in to the new store view browser interface now you'll see I have some units configured here on my uh, system here this is a test wall system, so uh, the values here are not uh, valid, but uh, the steps are the same, so I can show what I want to do here. If I wanted to sh exchange um, an AKCC550 with an another AKCC550, I could use the uh, copy wizard function and save the settings as a file, and then use that file to load back into the new controller. But since in this example we're going to change from an AKCC550A to a new AKCC55 controller, we have to do some more steps manually because it's two different types of controllers and we can't um, use the backup file from an AK, uh, from the other file, I mean the other controller. What we need to take a backup is, uh, our backup of is our, we need to get all the parameter settings, alarm configuration, lock definitions and also uh, information about which schedules this controller is part of and also what kind of master control functions uh, the controller is now in my examples i'm not uh, my controllers are not part of any master control functions but this is something you have to be aware of as well when you make an exchange from one type to another type as well let's dig into it I'm going to change uh, in my video, I'll change this frozen meat uh, asset here with address 53. And if I connect to this unit, I will see that this is the AKCC 550A. You can see that here on the list. And I'm going to change this controller to a new one. So to get these details, uh, an easy way to get part of the details is by using the built-in report function of the system manager. If you go up to file and then select download report, if I download this report, I click OK to that, let's download it. And then when I open this report here, I'll see all my details about this system manager. If I use the notepad search function or find function, and search for device detail let me just move that over here then you'll see i have a list of all the different assets and their parameter groups and uh, the parameter settings now i need to find my specific controller so i'll look for that i know it's address 53 and there it is and here i have the group the parameter and its respective value right now i can see here what the current settings are on this asset so now I have the parameter settings. Another information I can also get from this uh, asset is alarm details or alarm configurations. I know that it's all the way at the bottom here after the audit trail, it comes up here. So there it is. And now if I again search for the asset, I have all the alarm actions that are alarm alarms that are configured on this unit with an action code. If the alarm is disabled or set to log only, then it will not appear in this list. But all alarms that has an action code assigned to it will appear on this list. So now I also have an overview of my alarms in this file. I can also go back up here and I can see here that I have uh, schedules enabled. Here's an overview of which schedules there are what their timings are and so on. And I can also see which controllers are connected to which uh, schedule. For instance, if I take mine here, frozen meat 1.1, I can see it's connected to schedule number three 
and 6. I can see A3 is a defrost schedule and B6 is case lighting schedule. If I go up higher here, I can see that it was 3 and 6. So I have here, it is this defrost schedule and this lighting schedule that I'm connected to. So now I have information about the parameter settings, alarm configuration, and also which schedules it's part of. The last thing, or one of the last things I need is which uh, lock or what the lock configuration is of my system manager, oh sorry, case controller. So I'll close this window here. And the easiest way to find that information is by going to history feature here and select my asset. I have it here, frozen meat. And then I'll just for this example, I leave the period as it is. Or let me just uh, maybe, yeah, I'll leave it as this. The values here are anyway dummy values, so uh, it doesn't make sense whether I have two days or one day. But once my uh, system manager has retrieved all these data points from the asset, I can uh, save it to a history file already now here, and then uh, open it in StoreView browser again afterwards. But I would like to have it as a CSV file, and then I'll have to draw it first. I'll select all points here, and then the points will be drawn here. As you can see, there's not much history here. Um, I'll use the export function to do this. So when I press the export button, I can again choose between a history file or a CSV file. And this is the file that I'm interested in right now. So I'll select CSV. I leave the specific settings here as they are. And then I'll click Save As. And now a report file is also saved onto my system here. And if I open it, I'll see that I have all the names here for this asset. I have these parameters that are locked in the unit here. So now I have information about my parameters, alarm configuration, lock details, schedules. And the last thing I need to know is which master control function it's part of. And I'll just go back to the frozen meat cabinet here again in the detail view. On this one, let me take a look. So this one is part of the evaporator shutdown function. It's part of that one. There's no P optimization enabled on this suction here. So now I have all the details needed for this asset. And I can now continue with exchanging the controller on the system. My colleague Ken Sonne Jensen has made a video about this. And I'll strongly suggest you to go watch that video as well. Before we continue with the rest of the process. I'll go do it on my wall here as well. And then I'll get back to you. I have now changed the controller to the new CC55 controller here. And if you notice, but I still need to do the configuration part of it. If you notice, if I go into the asset again, where, where there it is, then you'll see that it's still an AKCC 550A. So I need to tell my system manager now that I've changed this controller and um, I need to reconfigure it to do that. I'll go to configuration and select network nodes because I need to scan the new controller. And I'll do that by starting a scan. It's still, nothing has changed to the network beside this. It's still a Modbus controller, so I'll leave it as it is. And I'll scan that. So now my system manager is starting to scan all the controllers on the network. And once it's finished, then I'll continue with the rest of the process. All right. Now my system manager has finished scanning here and I'll then go and verify that it is the correct controller that has been scanned on the network. I'll go to scan status and controllers and here I'll have an overview of all the controllers here and I can see here 53 is now a 4082 which is the CC55 and it's not configured correctly yet and I that's of course because I have to go and do that. So let's get 
to that and we'll go back to the configuration menu go to control and then select refrigeration we'll go to circuits and here I have to select the suction line here for that controller and you can see already now it's a mismatch because it's configured to be a 550A but it's actually not a 550A that is on this side and that's because there's also an address assigned to this asset here so that's why it knows it doesn't match up so I have to correct this now the easiest way to do that is by enabling this show only scan devices if I do that I only get the list of controllers that are on the uh, network that I have scanned already so I have done that already so I'll go double click here and I'll see a list of all the assets that are scanned which are not configured on my unit network here at the moment so I'll select mine here which is the 4082 which is the one unit that I have uh, scanned here so I select that one and go to OK so now it's an AKCC 55 and everything is good just to make sure that everything is actually good I'll go back to refrigeration addresses and then controllers I have to of course select the right rack group here and then I'll find my asset here address number 53 which is my CC55 meat controller and I'll just do a an upload from the controller so I double click here and now my system manager started to make an upload of the controller so once the date is updated here I now know that my system manager is able to communicate with this uh, case controller as well so everything is good so far now I have to continue with configuring this asset and let's start with the parameters I'll go to the detail window here and select frozen meat cabinet I'll see that yes it is the correct asset as well and then I'll open my report from earlier and I'll select my controller again find device detail and then I want the details for address 53 here I have them and now it's just up to me configuring going through all these parameters and configure the relevant parameters in the CC55 as well when this is done I have to reconfigure the alarm configuration as well and that is done in the configuration menu and I need to go to control refrigeration circuits setup and yes I want to load from the controller I'll select my asset here frozen meat 1.1 I can also configure the different parameters in this window of course where I have all the parameter groups listed here and then their respective parameters will be shown below so now I'll go to the alarm configuration here I have a list of all the alarms in the unit and as you see here by default everything is enabled with normal severity normal and and also priority one these are the default settings both I have to go back to my report here again I'll just shrink it a bit so I can see all the details and then I'll have to go at the bottom here and find address 53 now these were the configuration as it was on my CC 550 but now I have an AKCC 55 the alarms might be different from here because it's a different controller so there might be more alarms and there might be different names to the alarms as well so I have to find the right one here I can see here this is control error RTC error is here PE error S2 S3 and so on all these are listed here so it's pretty much similar they can be changed one to one but be aware of that there might be some differences as well that you need to be aware of so go through the list here and then configure your alarm configuration then we need to make sure that we also have the right schedules for this one we know that this information is also available in the report that's again on the top here where I have the different schedules here and I can see that my unit was part of schedule number three and six which was defrost frozen 
and six test case lightning. So I'll go to defrost frozen and then I'll double click on this one and then select which assets are part of it. And here I'll find frozen meat that I've selected. It's already selected, so that's good. This is just to verify that it is configured correctly, of course. And I'll go to the case lighting here as well. And I can see frozen meat is up there. It's also selected, so that's also good. So parameters have been configured, alarms have been configured, schedules has been configured. Now I need to go take a look at the lock definitions. So I'll go here again to refrigeration. Sorry. I have to go to configuration and then history configuration. This is my lock configuration window here. I'll go to controllers in this menu. Select the group or cabinet here that I want. Where is my frozen meat? There it is. And now I have to configure all the lock parameters. Luckily, I didn't have that many on my previous. I have control state, frozen meat, U17 and so on. I can see what parameters they are here. And then I'll have to find them on the list here, of course, on the different pages where some of the parameters might be on a different page. I have to find them and then reconfigure my locks. Finally, the thing that I need to be aware of is also in case my case controller was previously connected to a optimization function, I need to make sure that my new controller is also connected to this uh, optimization function. I know that I didn't have any PO optimization, but I was part of the evaporative uh, injection off function here, and that is, I can see this asset is also part of as well. So that was all what I need to do. Of course, these parameters here were all dummy values here, but the features and um, I mean the, the the procedure is the same on a real asset as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it will help you in your uh, next assignment you have to go and do on the System Manager 800. And um, in case you have other questions, please feel free to contact your local Danfoss contact person, support person. And um, yeah, you can ask him about all the details on both our new AKCC 555 controller and also the new AK System Manager 800A as well. Thanks for watching. See you in another video.